Hello everyone, this is Sister Collapse, and I'm back yet again playing FTB Beyond. And I don't know why I have that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, uh, I've done some work. I've done some work. You can see here, I did a whole lot of work on my deep resonance system. And uh, we're going to go over that in a second and get to some other fun stuff. Some fun stuff, get it all done. But uh, let's take a look at this system first, because I think I pretty much have it fully 100% automated. Uh, auto automated? No, automated. Using nothing but liquid monitors, uh, conduit, and more conduit. So that's, yeah, pretty simple. Very simple. Uh, it looks complex. It's really not. Um, so let's go over it. So, same as yesterday. Exact same setup for the lava. So, I got a tank of lava, which I'm. No, I don't have to replace that anytime soon. Um, set to 45% to monitor these tanks. When these are around under 45% fills lava. So same as yesterday. Uh, I have enter chest in here pulling in through believe that no yeah that is a flat transfer node. And uh, yeah. So that is just pulling in the resident ore. Up here is our first stage of filtering. So we've got eight filters. Uh, not filters, purifiers. Uh, pulling in, I'm gonna have to make some more of that soon. Uh, pulling in the filter material. And it does it super fast. If you actually watch it, it's going to go through in a second. Boom. And I found out that little trick. Um, if this tank is empty, when new liquid comes in, you don't have to wait. Because usually if there's material, uh, liquid crystal in the tank, say if there was already, already 500 millibuckets in there, these seem to fire pretty slowly. They, I don't know what the cooldown is on them. But if nothing is in the tank, they fire instantly and instantly purify the liquid. So this is a great way to do the first stage super fast. It then gets transferred over here. Uh, this is basically just a second purification just in case something happened. Uh, I end up with too much liquid in there for any reason. Uh, so there's six more filters back here. Gets pulled down here. It does a check with the valve. And I found out if you set this to zero milo buckets, it doesn't care about how much is in the, in the tanks. Uh, so... I just set them all to zero because I just wanted to run through the system as quick as possible. Uh, once it's at 85%, gets pulled down here. This is a holding tank. This is where it's getting gummed up, but it's not a big deal. Uh, what I have set here is another liquid monitor. This one is set to 3%. There's a reason I have it set to 3%, and I'll explain that in a second. But this one is doing the gunpowder. And I actually need to... I've got a ton of crystals here now, so let's throw one in. I found out because I thought this was going to be a problem, but I found out that uh, the crystal that is in here uh, can queue up. So this crystal has more than these two bars to be able to fill it up with more crystal. I thought it was going to waste it at first until I did a test. Uh, so I will be able to just queue up crystals and kind of let them go in here as needed. Just make sure it only sets to one at a time and it should be good. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, anyway, we get in tons of crystal. Uh, once the tank hits 3%, which is the reason I did 3%, I'll explain that. These tanks hold 16,000 millibuckets. 3% equals 480%. Uh, not 400, 480 millibuckets. So once this tank hits 480 millibuckets, the laser turns on. So this is redstone conduit, just transferring the signal. So signal turns on at 480 millibuckets. The laser fires. Once it's purified... Boom, it goes. You won't see it as much on this one because this tank always has stuff in it, but uh, it's always firing. You'll see it more in the next stage. Uh, over here, because the purity drops here, so the purity you know, is down to 12% right now. Um, once it comes through here, it'll get purified a second time. Again, six filters, so it's almost instant. Um, and this checks for 85% purity a second time where it gets pulled into another tank. And this time we are raising the purity from 85% up to 100 using enderpearls. Uh, again, a liquid monitor set to 3%. Um, comes over here. I'm missing something. No. See? It's fired off. That's what I wanted to see. Um, the reason I'm using 480 millipockets, it transfers liquids, it seems, in 100 millibuckets at a time. Um, and if you look at, where is it here? What is that called? We want the laser use. 
uh, when it's doing the using the crystal to uh, raise the stats on them it does it per 500 millibuckets if it's under that you're actually wasting a little bit of your cat catalyst so by keeping that percentage up to you know three percent you're never actually wasting catalyst which was my goal so the purity uh, in this one gets raised up to a hundred percent Drop down, does the final check. I don't care about this check because it should already be at 16, uh, yes, yeah, 16, 50 percent. No, 70 and 50 percent. Gets pulled down here, gets pulled into these two crystallizer tanks. And I felt, uh, not felt, I needed two of them to keep going. So I have, I have tons of crystals now. The amount of crystals I have is actually pretty ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, it's working great. Working great. I'm noticing here too, you look at these crystals, like they're still 70, 60, 100. This one's 76, 100. Some of them are stacking and some aren't. And I don't know why. Uh, for some reason, some of them have different either meta or NDP, NDP, no, ND, no, MBT data. There you go. And uh, they're stacking oddly, but that really isn't an issue. So uh, th the last part of this I need to automate is where is it? is the filter material which I don't have a source of sand yet and yeah, that was weird it wasn't making the sound I really learned to dislike the sound of these generators but uh, I need to automate the replacement of the gems so I haven't done that yet and I need to automate the uh, filter material so what are we gonna get to today today we are gonna get to setting up a void resource miner because we need mica. That's pretty much, I can think mica and soul sand are the only thing that this thing produces that I want. Uh, we need to void ore miner because that's an, just an alternative quarry. And with a uh, white lens, and once I can upgrade the modifier cores, we'll be able to get more resonating ore so I can always have a constant supply. Uh, we're also gonna set up quantum quarry. That'll handle all our sand needs. This would handle sand needs too, but this will pretty much get us every resource in the game. Uh, but, uh, so I'm going to set that up as well. We're going to have the power now with these gems. Once I set up the uh, auto filling of the gems, which I'll probably do in between episodes because I'm moving this whole setup. I'm going to be moving to a new base that is 300 and, well, it's almost 3,500 meters that way. So I'm going to head over there. I'm going to drink a cup of coffee. And I'm going to fly there real fast and I'll hook up with you guys in a second. Okay, and here we go. We're at our new, well, this will be the new base. The new base, this is going to be where I do my main build. So everything is going to go here. I was talking about doing two bases originally. I'm only going to do one very large base. So uh, we're going to do it that way. Uh, I did build walls. Uh, they're all brick. I automated the creation of brick. Not a big deal. It's just uh, being pulled in from the mining dimension, getting smelted down in a furnace. And then getting turned to brick and getting thrown in here. Uh, I think these walls took, I think it was about 8,000 brick maybe. Something like that. Not a big deal. Uh, I just kind of left it on and let it do its thing. Um, but it's done now. Uh, I think it's 101 blocks diameter is what I did. And about 20 tall. So uh, I'm going to do a lot more with it. I'm going to carve it out. I'm going to, you know, make the walls pretty and all that stuff. And get rid of all this stuff. But for right now... I just want to get some of my stuff over here. So we're going to start working on those resources. I also, oh yeah, I also put in a second uh, fine storage system. I'll be able to link them up later on once I have a very secure uh, power supply. But uh, right now, just that. Uh, so let's get to one of these. Let's get to, which one should we do here? I Actually, the one I want to do first is the resource miner. Um, just because this one is my... I need it the least, so let's let's get it though, because we do need it. We need that mica. It's one thing I don't like about environmental tech is this right here. Um, you sort of, I'm going to need a couple of those bricks just for placement stones. You need mica to be able to upgrade it, so you're forced to make the, the, the resource miner. And uh, this is going to get moved, so I don't really care where it goes. Uh, it's pretty easy to set up. I think this one's four tall. We'll know in a second. There we go. I don't have the book on me anymore. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's four tall. So we'll throw it here. Put that there. You're going to need your assembler. Uh, and you need 32. I'm making the tier two. So 32 uh, tier two uh, structure blocks. Uh, 16 hardened stone machine base. Three laser core and your lens. It doesn't have to be a white lens. Just the one I'm using. And four of these cores. Uh, modifier cores. So it is pretty cheap. Oh, I am going to have to get rid of that though. There we go. 
And yeah, you just right click the controller. Oh, it was one taller. I messed up everything. Well, easy fix. And we'll just right click it. We could actually stand on top of this one and just kind of hold it down, let it do its thing. And we should get a message that says multi block complete. Maybe. There we go. Multi block assembly complete. So this is effectively done. We should have some flux points. Gonna throw some flux on this. There we go. That should be getting power now. And the only thing we should need is. Boom. Boom. I would love to make a boom. Sure, it's getting power. It's not getting power. Oh. I didn't chunk load my. I need to head back to the base. I forgot the chunk load. Okay, and we're back, and it's up and running. It's pulling in stuff. It's getting alabaster, sand, dirt, etc. All like it should be. Uh, I did forget to dig the hole down the bedrock, but I just went and did that. Um, yeah, so that one's set up. Uh, we need some items to pull in before I can start actually filtering this. So while that is doing that, we're actually going to set up the second one. And... Uh, I always learned that the fastest way to get diamonds is to during it dig straight down. So we're just gonna dig straight down, um, because you know I, I like diamonds, and you know if this is the fastest way to get them, we're just gonna do it this way. So I'm not really concerned at all whatsoever about uh, running into lava. So there we go. There's bedrock. I kind of I built in an extreme hills biome, and that was kind of on purpose. Uh, embers. When you're, I'm going to be doing embers very soon, actually. And uh, embers, extreme hill biomes have more of the, uh, there we go. Uh, I guess as it is embers <laughs> that you can actually get for the resources that you need to. It's basically its fuel source. So there we go. We got a 1000 RF tick there. So we'll be able to get it around here. We won't get high densities of it, but uh, we can just build more of the miners. Uh, so that one's on. That one's doing its thing. And we're going to need another large storage for now. I'll sort out better sorting in time. I'm going to have to go through and set up filters for all of these. but Because uh, there's going to be materials I don't want. Especially in mass. But once this thing gets enough mica uh, out of it, which may take a while. The only resource I'm probably going to keep out of this is soul sand. Uh, sand and maybe mica. I can't think of anything else that I'm going to need out of that. I'm basically going to be able to do drawers with just voids and keep the soul sand, mica, and the other one. Uh, um, and this one, this one's going to take a lot of filtering because there's going to be a lot of stuff that I don't need out of it. Uh, so that's two of them effectively just set up right there. And uh, I should probably sleep. And my bed's been glitching, so I'm a little worried about sleeping. So uh, I've been getting stuck. So we'll see if it does it right now. Nope, not this time. Every once in a while I get stuck, it'll be daytime, and I'll still be laying down in the sleeping position. It's very odd. Uh, so these are using 1K RF a tick, which isn't a big deal. Uh, we're producing 12,000 just from our deep resonance alone. And in time, that'll get up to 20,000 and probably 80,000 is my goal uh, with four gems running constantly. So that's not a big deal. We got one more quarry to set up, and this is the hardest one to filter, but probably the best quarry out of all of them. Um, did I not bring a lever? Oh, I can get sticks. Uh, it is the best one, I th in my, my opinion, it's the best one, um, simply because it can get pretty much every resource in the game. Uh, except for maybe one or two. I don't think I can get dimensional shards. And there might be something else. Oh, mica, obviously. And <laughs> a couple other things. Did I not bring enough? Why did I only bring four? <laughs> oh, I'm taking another trip back to the base. I can't believe I did that. Okay, I'm back. I'm back, and I've got a l the rest of our quantum core actuators. So there we go. They're there. Threw a lever on already. And uh, I think we just need a uh, large storage. Gonna throw that there. Guess it doesn't matter which side this goes on, I think, at all. There we go. Turn that on. See how this does. This should be. Oh, helps if you give it power. 
It does not run without power. There you go. Throw that there. And this one is fast. Right off the hop, unlike these ones. Uh, but it is going pretty good. These ones are kind of frustrating. Yeah, it can get pretty much everything in the game, but they take a massive amount of filtering. It's actually much easier to set up a whitelist than a blacklist, so that'll be what I do. Um, yeah, like already, I don't want to get that much cobblestone. I can get cobblestone in much easier ways. I think I set up some filters, brought some filters with me. Yes, I did. Excellent. So let's get cobblestone on there, toot sweet. There we go, throw that in there. And there's a cobblestone. I can actually use that cobblestone. I may let that run for a bit later on, but not right this second. Uh, yeah, because I do need cobble. I'm going to be using a fair amount of bricks, uh, stone brick, so not horrible to have. But uh, I don't want a ton of it, and I really don't want it when I'm filtering. Like, uh, this will want filtered. Definitely don't want that. I can't see us wanting limestone or marble. Dirt is another one. And probably gravel. Actually, I'm going to use gravel. Um, I'll end up just putting it in uh, some kind of voided off storage so I only have so much on hand. That way, this is can be also my source for... It's not getting any sand. Does this one get sand? This one definitely gets sand. I think this one will get sand too. It really comes down to what biome that it's currently uh, working on, which I think it tells you. Biome. The biome. The void. <laughs> well, it's probably not going to get much out of the void, but it does pick random biomes. and It could be anything. It could be the end, uh, the nether, all kinds of other biomes, but uh, you, you never really know what you're going to get. It is a little random like that, but that is why it's kind of good because you can just get so many different resources out of it. I will monitor this over time and, uh, you know, slowly filter out everything that I need. It, it's a process when you set up these new machines. You kind of need to just, you know, figure out what you want to keep because I might keep that. Let me see, netherrack. Do I have any use for it? Not really. Yeah, I literally think out of these ones it's only going to be this this and well probably end stone but again I'll only keep so much and void it off and there's my mica excellent so definitely those four I would keep those four oh obsidian easy source of obsidian I don't think anything else oh enough alabaster to build the machines but outside of that nothing else nothing I keep keep saying that and I keep it going, oh, one more item, ooh, one more item. <laughs> and this is just gonna give us tons of resources, but we're gonna have to set up ore processing really soon. And uh, I'm probably gonna do that in two different ways. So, well, actually three different ways, but uh, set a bar ore, it's useless. I don't think it's used for very much, is it? No, not a ton. I guess it's using some of the Tech Reborn stuff, but outside of that, not so much. You always end up with way more than you need. But these I can handle, again, smelt them down. Other ones I can just store, void off, access, which is probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to end up using a drawer system for a lot of the ores. It's just an easy way, because if they change it to an ingot, ingot nugget, and a block, you can just use a, uh, is a compacting drawer. Yes, compacting drawer and hook that up to refined storage and uh or a2 doesn't matter which one and it can pull all three types of the blocks instead of just the one so it's definitely something we're going to do tungsten it's the first time i've seen that that's probably my first tungsten uh we will get into tech reborn at some point but there isn't a giant rush but uh yeah we've already that took no time at all no time at all and uh we already have three more machines running full tilt so I'm basically, my only holdback right now is a decent supply of mica. Doesn't seem to want to give me any. Again, oh, there's another piece. So excited over a single piece of mica. But uh, once we do, we get up to the tier threes. So tier three, let's see here, void resource miner. Just need two mica, then these, and that. That recipe's simple. 
Let me see here. Void or Miner. Again, Micah. I'm going to have to kill a couple more Withers, but that's not a big deal. And I don't think anything else. I'll probably do the Lightning Rod. I'm, like I said in the previously, I'm trying to stay away from solar. <laughs> so I am going to stick to that. We are doing no solar in this one. Not environmental tech solar. Uh, we might do some Draconic Evolution solar later on, but for now... Yeah, we're staying away from environmental tax solar because it is too good, too powerful, and too addicting. And uh, I'm hoping to set up possibly a second one of these later on uh, with a filter set to pull in dimensional shards. Because I'm curious uh, if there's a filter for that. Let's go here. Let's go to the ore miner. And tier 2 use here. Dimensional shard, or you get four point. Oh, same lenses that I'm using. So actually, I'll get that. I'm trying to think here. Redstone. Is this still all white? No. Do I have the wrong lens on that? Where's the resonating ore? Resonating ore. I guess with the resonating ore, I actually need the brown lens. Okay, so I am gonna have to make this. But that's not a big deal. I'll probably end up with two of these then. Unless this is able to keep up on tier 4. Because at tier 4, these things get really fast. Um, this one is probably almost already almost full. Yeah. Yep, it is. That filter is not doing what I want it to. Because I automatically took... Um, accidentally took out the... Cobble? I do have cobble in there. What? Oh, it's a whitelist. Let's put it on blacklist right now. There we go. And uh, yeah, that is that. Our quarry in the mining dimension is going to be getting broken down soon. It is about two thirds through its first run anyway. And we're not going to need it. So the mine dimension one is going to go. I'm going to start relying on these. Uh, just because they're lagless. The joy of these is they're virtually lagless. They're pulling, this is pulling stuff out of nothing. This is pulling stuff. It's not changing the world. It's not doing any block updates. Uh, the only update is put item in chest. So out of all of your choices, these are the best ones that you can go with. Uh, which is unfortunate because the other ones are cool. The ones that void areas and stuff like that. But I actually prefer using the RF Tools Builder for actual building and changing my world. Terraforming like this here will all get turned to dirt. Because, well, I prefer the look of dirt over random stone bits. But, uh, yeah, that's a thing. That's a thing. Okay, well, I think I'm going to end this video here. Um, we got quite a bit done. Actually, a massive amount done. Uh, we set up, yeah, yeah, two, two miners and the quantum quarry. I'm going to have to spend probably two hours setting up filtering on this. And uh, that's not fun for you guys to watch. But you will see the finished, you know, finished setup how I filter it and how I organize everything. Um, but it's grind work. This is grind work. There's no fun of watching that. Uh, yeah, we got a ton done. You guys got to see a fully automated, well, I will say 90% automated deep resonance system uh, done very simply. So when you guys, when I finally do the last uh, setup, I'll go over it very detailed uh, as much as I can and how I'm doing things. Uh, just so anyone can go about and go do it because the way I have set it up, literally anyone can do it. Literally anyone. Uh, you just need to know where it can get gummed up and how you can fix it. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to take off. You guys all have a good one. As always, I want you guys to, uh, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. It's much appreciated. And, uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Later.